Welch, financial planner, who comes on for Monday Tuesday every week, uh, joins us here in the studio today. You've been looking at this. You kind of worked up your own, the good, the bad, and the ugly, based on what your take is on what you're seeing there, right? I did. So there are some great things about it. Yeah. There are some things that aren't so good, some things that I think actually are very counterproductive to creating jobs, mm -hmm. and then some things that are going to get downright ugly. Yeah, and you say, and, and we'll get into why, but you say downright ugly because it's going to cause one heck of a fight in Washington. Well, there is going to be a fight. I think you have a whole group of uh, particularly Republican freshmen that have committed to no new taxes, mm -hmm. and so the Obama job plan does include new taxes. And somehow you've got to figure out a way to pay for, pay for this, but... Uh, uh, they've committed to fight there, so it can get pretty ugly yeah, there. Yeah, let's take a look. Let's, let's start off. The, the good, you say, uh, that focus on jobs, uh, Stewart's good list, focus on jobs, infrastructure, you like that. You also say that school modernization program creates jobs as well for folks to get out there, and it's a benefit as well for communities. So I think exactly right, Rick. When you go out there and start fixing roads and bridges, you are going to put people to work, and it's not just construction people. There's a huge ripple effect, whether mm -hmm. it's attorneys, right. accountants, and you know, vendors of every type, even financial advisors get involved. Mm -hmm. And so I think that directly creates jobs. And what I really like about that is when you're done, at first it's a multi-year, most of those are multi-year mm -hmm. projects, but when you're done, you actually have something that's going to last for decades, like new roads and bridges. So I think that that's really good. Okay, here's the bad for Stewart. Uh, and let's put that one up on the screen if we can. And, and you, you know, some people are going to say, excuse me, but yeah. payroll tax cuts. Yeah, payroll tax cuts. Well, so everybody, you know, every working American under this plan is going to get more money in their paycheck. So I think that that is, from their perspective, that's good. But what does it do to create jobs? If, if this is really, I don't know how you get this economy cranked up without taking this 10 to 20 million people that want to work, that are out of work, can't find jobs. And this is all about creating jobs. You know, uh, increasing payroll or reducing payroll taxes from both the employer side and the employee side is not going to have a leverage effect on creating jobs. It'll create a few jobs, but not very many. Mm -hmm. And if you, for example, if you get money, extra money in your paycheck, what are you going to do with it? You're either going to save it or you're going to pay down debt or maybe spend it to the extent you save it or pay down debt, you're not creating any jobs. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the ugly, the last one on the list. There's a couple of them that you hit on. First off, you say restrictions on tax-free muni bonds. You say that's going to be a problem based on what we're already seeing. A lot of municipalities out there will suddenly find themselves with, with more reductions. Well, Rick, that Fine. is yeah, totally right. counterproductive. So the first thing is, is as soon as you do that, what's going to happen is uh, municipalities are going to have to increase their interest rate in order to attract investors, those investors that have now been you know, pushed away right. from that. And, and, the, and these, are already, these municipalities are already laying people off. And it's just math, economic 101. If you raise the expenses, if you cost them more money, they're going to lay off more people. Well, let's go quickly, and we've got only about 20 seconds here, but you also, I put it as the Buffett rule, which is the way this has been dubbed after yesterday's speech from the president. Uh, a higher, yeah, at least a minimum tax that equals what the middle class pays for a million dollars or more if you're an income, your earner fall in that category. You say it's ugly, one, because it's going to cause a big fight on Capitol Hill. Well, I think the other thing is, is uh, the, the, the high income earners can afford to, they can, they can afford to pay more income tax. I think the problem with this is that you're adding greater complexity to a, to a system that is a tax system that's already out of control. What they need to do is come back and do a total revision of the income tax law. Yeah, and good luck with that one too, right? <laughs> Stuart well, there's Welch. a solution. Yeah, there, there is a solution. Stuart Welch, it's good to talk to you today. Thanks so much. Thanks, Rick. Interesting topic. We're going to hear a lot more like that coming in the days uh, to come. Want to enjoy a spa-like bathroom in your own home? Something